Hey everyone, Cobb Mike here from MLive.com, joined by Justin Rogers. It is finally upon us, Justin, the week of the NFL draft. Um, mercifully, it's, it's going to come to an end after uh, months, seemingly, of the same storylines going around and around. Um, so we're going to do video installments all week, uh, a preview in the draft. Uh, today is the first edition, and we're going to do the offense. Um, how do you see this breaking down for the Lions going into the draft offensively, Justin? Well, they've got some some obvious holes. They've got holes on the offensive line, multiple. Uh, they got to address the running back. I think they could still uh, stand to upgrade third wide receiver. Mm -hmm. About the only place they're set on the offense is is tight end and um, quarterback. Ooh. Mercifully, oh, I was yeah. going to say. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I think we're in agreement. Um, offensive line is the single biggest area of need on this yeah. this roster. Um, it's. Uh, convenient for them. I think it's a, a pretty deep class in those first two rounds of, of tackles and guards, and I, I really expect the, the Lions to you know take whoever the best player is available at that point to to fill one of those spots. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I mean, you never really know. You have no assurances going into a draft, and of course, the Lions are gonna they're gonna draft the best player available. Um, but there are needs, and looking at the needs, some can, can they can, that can give you a roadmap for where they'll go throughout the draft. And I, I th it's certain they'll take at least one offensive lineman. It's possible they'll take two because they do. I mean, the only sure things they have on the, on the offensive line at this point are uh, Larry Warford at right guard and uh, Travis Swanson at center. And you have Reef back uh, for the next two years, but he could play left tackle or he could play right tackle if they draft a left tackle. Um, and you know, from all the people we've talked to, talked to throughout the offseason, it, it seems like there are f a group of four or five offensive tackles who are available to the Lions at 23, or should be in that middle to the back end of, of the first round. But there's not a lot of distinction on who's ahead of who. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, there aren't a lot of guarantees with those guys outside of Brandon Scherf um, from Iowa, who's going to be long gone by the time the Lions draft. Um, each tackle is talented, but at the same time has some issues. Um, either on on the field or off the field, and um, I think a guy like Lyle Collins from LSU makes a ton of sense for the Lions because he can play tackle. He he was uh, SEC Offensive Lineman of the Year at left tackle last year, but he's also played guard before, and so he gives you that that that, that um, the versatility to, to play guard right away, which is where the Lions have a, a huge need right now. There's no left guard on the roster, or he could swing out to to tackle down the road. He gives you that possibility as well. In a single player, and uh, we talked to Martin Mayhew last week, Justin. He said that versatility like that is attractive uh, to the team. Yeah, I, I think versatility is a little overrated. I mean, I, I like versatility in a backup player, but when you get a starter, you know, I want a guy that's going to be an expert at his position. You, know, you look at a guy like AJ Cam from South Carolina, who's you know, I think a possibility in the second round, a, a mauling left guard. All he played four seasons, started every game at left guard, and and that's what he's best at. Could he move to right guard? Sure, he's not going to play tackle. He's probably not going to play center, but he's an expert at left guard. And if you're going to start there and you don't need to worry about flexibility, then, then so be it. I, you know, you mentioned that you know they could draft two offensive. Linemen. I wouldn't be surprised if they took offensive linemen in the first and second round. And I don't think a lot of fans would be upset. You know, if they, yeah. if they came out of this class with Lael Collins or Eric Flowers in the first round, yeah. and then go out and get a guy like Can or Tomlinson in that second round, and you're talking about a, a team that's repeatedly expressed interest in and in being able to run the football mm -hmm. those are four guys that uh, you know their resume is built on their run blocking and you're going to you know push that running game to another level and and that you know brings us to the next guy they got to add a running back yeah yeah they do and there's a couple of really good ones available in the first round Todd Gurley Melvin Gordon uh, I think most people expect both those guys to go in the first round mm -hmm. I know Mayhew thinks it's a possibility as well um, the Lions, uh, they were 28th in rushing last year, but, you know, I, I could see a scenario where they take the, the Dallas Cowboys approach, which is, I mean, the Cowboys took offensive linemen three out of four years, I think it was, right? First or was it round. three straight? Yep. Yeah, in, in the first round. And um, so to your point about taking offensive linemen in the first two rounds, it's possible. And I think that for the Lions, I think the breakdown set up front, I mean, Drake Bell's a good player. I think Reggie Bush, even last year, um, aside from the injury, still has some talent left in him. Those guys weren't consistently good because of all the breakdowns up front, the injuries, the, the instability, the lack of performance from a, a ver number of positions. Um, I think repairing the offensive line is is priority one, even for the running game. And I, I mean, if I'm the Lions, I take I take an offensive lineman in the first round before I take a, a tailback um, because that's without having upgrades to the offensive line, your tailback's not going to do anything anyway. Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've said it multiple times. I'm I'm big Todd Gurley guy. I think you know he's the type of running back that that wins games in cold weather and playoff situations. You need third and two in a you know sub. Uh, 
sub freezing temperatures. You know, he's the type of back like a Marshawn Lynch, like an Adrian Peterson. I want to hand the ball off to, and I'm comfortable he's going to get it. I, I, I think um, Gurley is a game changer. I wouldn't take Gordon in the first round. You know, you, you know, obviously a lot's going to depend on who's on the board, but I look at Gordon more as like a. Uh, a Reggie Bush type, um, you know, they say three downs. I, I think he's going to end up being more like an elite change of pace guy, uh, which would fit in pretty well with the. Yeah, the I mean the Lions tricking. need that, but I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it with <laughs> yeah. the first round. You know, I look at Joey yeah. Bell last year. He closed out the season really well. Yeah. He ran strong. He broke tackles. The holes were better in the second half of the season. Averaged like four point four yards per carry, uh, but but he's getting older. He can't handle. 30 carries a game. You don't want to put that strain on on yeah. him. So they're going to need this complement. Teams find running backs everywhere. You find an undrafted guy some year, but uh, you know if they take a, a Duke Johnson or an Amir Abdullah in those in the on the day two, yeah. I don't think fans yeah. will complain about that too much either. You know this about me. I'm a I'm an Abdullah guy. I think he'd be a great cat for the Lions. I think he'd fit in uh, extremely well um, from day one. I think what he brings and what he can do would be a, a perfect fit for the offense and what the Lions want to do. That's the biggest reason why I'm against drafting a running back in the first round. I think the uh, I think they they're better served drafting an offensive lineman because they're not going anywhere without the upgrades right. there. But th- this tailback class is deep. The Lions can get instant contributors in day two, uh, maybe even in the in the third round. Uh, I mean, Tevin Coleman I think is a really talented. He could fit in. Uh, Abdullah, we mentioned him. Duke Johnson can do a little bit of everything. I mean, there's. This is a deep. This draft is deepest at tailback and, and receiver. I think those are the two deepest uh, positions, and so and it's not as deep at, at offensive line. If you wait until the second or the third round to get your offensive lineman, you're you're not assur- assured of getting a day one guy. And the lines need day one guys. They might need more than one day one guys up front. Um, I think they can go offensive line there and still get their their running back, uh, someone who can be that joint ball complement in, in second or third round. The team's really interested in Coleman. I mean, they yeah. brought him in for a visit. They went to his yeah. pro day and met with him. Uh, of the day two options, he's probably my favorite. And you're talking about a, a home run hitter. And I, I understand Indiana's offensive scheme kind of led to it. But he had something like 60 carries in his career, 15 yards or more. And that's what the Lions mm-hmm. need. They need that guy that, you know, maybe he's not going to get the third and one, third and two. Um, you know, same same with like Theo Riddick. That's what Jake Bell's there for. But they need that guy that every, you know, five, six, seven carries they give him to, that mm-hmm. he could count on a seven, eight yard run and, and the possibility of, of breaking in the open field and and Coleman's that guy to I me mean, he's got a, a foot injury that needs to check out medically but if that does it you know I think that would be a really nice fit for the Lions in round two we talked offensive line we talked tailback those are definitely the biggest two needs I think for the offense um, but the Lions do have a need I think for a third wide, wide receiver as well particularly one who can play special teams because Stafford didn't have a reliable third target last year behind Tate and, and Kelvin um, and the running game, Ross was okay if you look at his averages. They're actually middle of the pack. He wasn't terrible. But what you lacked were explosive plays and game-changing plays. And that's something that I think a guy like Tyler Lockett, a guy we both like, Justin, uh, I think he fits perfectly for the lines. Uh, I mean, he would fit in the slot immediately. He can play. He's a good receiver. It's not. He d- doesn't just specialize on More than 100 receptions. Exactly. Um, but then he's an electric punt returner, too. I think he's the best punt returner in this draft. And so you get a guy who fills basically two needs on your roster, um, and he's a guy who can who could change some, some games for you or flip, from, flip some field position for you on, on special teams. He's that good on punt return. Yeah, if, if the Lions don't address a skill position in the first two rounds, I, I think if, if Lockett's there in the third round at 88, or even if you have to trade up a little bit to get him, I, I think you race to the podium. Mm-hmm. Uh, 15.3 yards average career punt returns uh, also an explosive kick returner seven touchdowns on special teams um, you know a leader a good character guy I mean there's there's just not a lot of flaws with him the, the biggest one being his his size he's he's just a small guy he's, he's yeah. kind of thin framed you worry about how that'll hold up at the NFL level but NFL I mean everybody gets hurt you can't worry too much about it unless the guy's got you know a string of, of serious injuries and uh, durability wasn't too big of an issue for Lockett so I, I think would be an outstanding fit that's what we got for today um, certainly some some uh, I mean the Lions at this point are a defensive team they they weren't very good last year on offense they lost some games because of it their season ended because of it against the Cowboys um, looking for some upgrades we'll be back tomorrow uh, with a video preview of the defense uh, for Justin Rogers, I'm Kyle Mikey. We are M Life. Keep it right here.